Hi, Misha here, and happy Labor Day. Merry Labor Day. I, I don't know what the, the term is, but hell, it's a day off work, and a Monday off work at that, so hey, can't beat it. And around here, and probably where you live too, it's often considered the last weekend of summer, kind of that last gasp to, to get out, have a three-day weekend, and have time with family before school sits in. When I was a kid, we would go to school anywhere from one week to just two days before a three-day Labor Day weekend. And that was just enough time to meet your teachers, kind of get your curriculum in order, make sure you had all your supplies, had your books, you know, kind of iron out any wrinkles because after Labor Day, it was uh, nose to the grindstone. And when I was a kid, not so much in the last few years, but when I was a kid, summer really was over. Um, it would start to get cool. We had what we would call Indian summer. That's just what it was called. There was also blackberry winter in the spring. And Indian summer was anywhere from a long weekend to maybe two weeks on the extreme long end in September where it would get warm again. Not quite hot, but you know, 85, maybe 90 degrees and then after that you're in a true fall and well it's that I'd share that this isn't my first black box from the cabin far from it I've been doing them since uh, since April and I know most of my content here on the personal channel lately has been about the cabin and for those who supported, I greatly appreciate the encouragement. It, it actually did and does help because this has been a very daunting project. And it's something I've never even done before, even close to. And uh, it's been quite a financial burden, I'll just be honest, that I was just really praying would, would pay off in the end, you know. But once kind of committed, well, nothing you could do but go forward. But, you know, I understand that there are probably some who aren't interested in this story. And I get it. For me, it's been a very exciting and something I've learned about. But, I also understand what it's like when you have someone, a friend, a family member who won't shut up about something that, yes, is important to them, but has no relevance on you. So I understand that. I've had friends do that too. I'm happy for them, but after a while you're like, enough already. But that's why we have the personal channel here, so I can kind of just be me and kind of talk about what's on my mind, and that way it's not on the main Misha Co channel. But yeah, if, for those of you that maybe you're kind of tired of hearing about the cabin, the good news is, uh, yeah, we're, we're done. Uh, a few little wrap-up things here and there. One more cabin project video, number 10 in the series. And that's it. Now, of course, I'm going to be doing lots of videos from the cabin. And I will probably do a bit of an online journal or vlog, if you want to call it that, about me living out here in the woods. Um, keep in mind, you know, I'm blind, of course, and, you know, I'm in the in the sticks I'm, I'm about as rural as you can go if you start going further you start to kind of get into the next town and just you know the goings on that'll happen out here and there will be some bad things happen you know losing power equipment breakdown into uh, dealing with that so in that sense the cabin will kind of continue to be a backdrop a setting and that will probably be a, a lot of what this personal channel turns into is just my my life out here at least when I'm not in town because what I figure will happen I'll probably spend one to two weeks a month out here and uh, the other in town so I can do most of my work from here except of course shipping uh, shipping product so you know that's I've got to return to town to do that but also, other work is better to do out here, like doing videos. I find that I'm much more relaxed and, frankly, creative out here. F fewer distractions. So, 
I feel like, and, and I could be wrong, but I feel like the quality of my work is better when doing it out this way. But I guess we'll find out over time. So tomorrow I will do the final cabin project video. It's kind of part two of two of Labor Day weekend, which will be a walkthrough with the furniture, or at least some of it installed. I got a, a note that uh, some things are delayed, you know, back order that, and they won't be here till the 15th now. So, oh knows, I'll have to come out and be here for the 15th. Whatsoever will I do. <laughs> but, I wanted to just say hello, do a black box, talk about events in life. And also just kind of talk about my thoughts building this place and kind of reminisce because here's the thing this cabin project actually began Labor Day weekend of 2023 or at least the actual project where we were making headway there were a number of false starts so for those who don't know how this all kind of started, the genesis of it. I want to take you back. For those who do remember, you can either skip ahead or just, you know, bear with me as I uh, reminisce. And it honestly all does go back to my childhood. I am an Ozark heavily, officially. Ozark High School mascot was the Hibbley. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, that's that's my family. Well, my mother's side came from Kansas. The rest of my family is, ju is just from here, even pre-Civil War or right after. And uh, quite a m few members of my family roam these mountains. Uh, one family member who was deceased before I was born, you know, he was a great-grandfather, was a game warden actually back in the 1930s during the depression and other members of my family have all been big hunters but the good kind not the obnoxious trophy kind I mean they, they took deer antlers and stuff but the you know eat what you kill in fact growing up m the majority of our meat we ate in the winter was from hunting uh, squirrel yes we ate squirrel uh, deer venison of course not really bear, although there is some bear hunting around here, but it's a pretty short season, and no one in my family ever really did bear. Uh, there was sometimes some uh, quail. There's wild quail around here. Very tasty, but not a lot of meat on that bird. And then come April, wild turkey season. I freaking love wild turkey. It's one of the best meats known to man. If you haven't ever tried it out, I know it's, it's kind of a hard meat to find, but it is, it's really tasty. And another thing, uh, again, Arkansas, Razorbacks, pigs, there are wild hog around here. And they're pretty much year-round because they reproduce like crazy. They're a very tough, durable animal. They don't have a lot of natural predators, all things considered. And uh, they can definitely uh, overpopulate the area and destroy crops and just kind of starve themselves too many of them not enough food and also sometimes you know hog out the other animals so it's actually considered ecologically sound because they're a bit of an invasive species the the hogs themselves to um you know thin the herd when you can and, and wild hog also very tasty think of like a, a pork chop but very very good meat very solid meat it's still got a, a little fat because it's still pork but for being pork, it's very lean, and since they grew up on natural vegetables and, and such around here, I mean, hog will eat anything, but no hormones, nothing like that, we had that too. In the summertime, uh, fish, uh, really spring and winter, uh, spring and fall, but in winter it's not really conducive to fishing most of the time. They kind of get very sedentary and it's hard to get them to come up. but. I digress. So summer was fish. Now around here a lot of folks love catfish. I mean not not a few hundred yards from where I sit there's a river that has pretty good catfish in it. 
I hate catfish. However, in a river also right behind me, a little stream, there are sun perch. I love sun perch. So you see where this is going. My family would eat the catfish. I would eat the sun perch. But everyone ate crappie. We also have crappie and uh, brim. And uh, some people do put bass in stock ponds. And they're a lot of fun to catch. But to be honest, bass is, well, not a bad meat. It's kind of mediocre. It doesn't have the best flavor. Ah, uh, but a little sun perch. That's just, that's, that's tasty right there. So that's what I grew up with. And a lot of people had gardens and stuff. Although a lot of times people would share, well, sell or trade produce on the uh, town square. So I just giving, I think, because this land that I'm on now is family land. Now, some land was inherited when, uh, but was essentially my step grandfather passed away and his land out here was split two ways uh, family members and uh, both are actually being lived on full time and then in 1990 uh, a, a nice old family that lived out here was ready to move to town you know you get older your health goes and you know it was just time for them to, to kind of move in so my family bought more land that is actually where I'm at right now in 1990. But I remember meeting the couple because I was still, of course, living at home at that time because I was uh, not quite a teenager yet. And I met them, and they, they were nice and uh, ended up buying their land. I remember when we were there that day or soon after while the deal was going through down the road, and it was a, it was an old, dusty dirt road back then. One of the, the old people living out had a cat with kittens, and there was a little calico kitten, and I so much wanted to take it home, but I was told no. If you ever wonder why I have so many cats as an adult, it's because I wasn't allowed to have a cat as a child. So it's actually all my parents' fault. Blame them. Meow. So yeah, this, this part of the land that actually uh, is on the river, the Mulberry River, was added to my family's holdings in, in 1990 and it's really close to the original holdings up the road. Um, there's one or two pieces of property in between them so it's not contiguous uh, but my cousin actually owns the other half uh, of the inheritance when his father passed and so on and so forth. Now when my own father passed in uh, the end of February of 2021 obviously everything he had went straight to my mother, you know, it's, it's all that. Well, I don't exactly remember how it got started. I, I did not suggest it. I didn't even think it. But the way the inheritance was to work out, and is to work out, is I get the house I grew up in in town, and uh, other two siblings get their land. And they were going to get land out here because it was kind of thought, and you know, I, I get it, you know, I'm blind, I can't drive, why would I want land out in the mountains? They also kind of forgot that I'm my father's son and I grew up out here just like anyone else. So there was a kind of a notion amongst my family, again, I don't know who started it, but I was asked, would you want some land? And the idea was I could set up a shooting range. That way, I would always have a place. I mean, out here, if if it becomes incorporated town, a city where you can't shoot, then there's no wilderness left, frankly. And actually, where my cabin is, it is up against a mountain, which my family owns too. So, in on that mountain, it's not forest land. It's not. It, it, it's you know, no one should be there. If they are, it's family members, and well, my family are not dumb enough to go up on the mountain when I'm shooting, because usually they'd be with me shooting anyway, so it doesn't matter. So the idea was, okay, piece of land to me, and it'll be my shooting range. Cool. And I thought, you know, put up a little shooting shack like Jay and I used to have at his father-in-law's land, a little 8 by 16 two-piece square thing with a roof. Cool. And I got to thinking, you know... I'd like to run electricity to it, so after dark we would have lights. That's one thing that happened to Jay a couple of, Jay and I more than a couple of times. We'd be out shooting till dark when we had shooting light, and then trying to pack up in the dark, especially fall, winter, 
it was kind of hairy. Um, kind of a little eerie too, just being out in the middle of a cow field, because if we hit something, our car broke down, wouldn't start, what do you do? Anyway, I thought, well, let's, you know, run power. And also maybe, that way we can hook in fans or, or whatever, just, you know, it sounds nice. And that's kind of stood for a while. I was going to do something. But, you know, there, you, to run power, you need an address. There, this place is completely undeveloped. And that's what's kind of remarkable to me. Where I'm at now, there was nothing here. There, there was a gate to this piece of property, and that was it. There was no pre-existing structure, and it really wasn't even cleared out. I mean, it, was a, it wasn't super overgrown, and my brother maintained it. He kept it mowed and kept the, uh, the briars and the, the brambles down. But other than that, it was really unutilized land. It was just across the road from another property, and there, like I said, go up the mountain. Now, in the wintertime, uh, him and his friends used the mountain to hunt on, but this is just kind of a pass-through area. Long story short, while I've still wanted to do the shooting shack, I thought, you know, what if I brought in or built a small one-room-like rest area? Put a little mini fridge in it, wall, air conditioner, because, you know, hot summer, ceiling fan in there, place to load mags. You know, just a little area to, to, to cool off in so you're not stressed out. You know, have a couple of chairs in there and uh, that. And that, that didn't seem like such a bad idea either. But then I got to looking and, and, and just building something like that was, you know, getting it done, getting power out here. It was already going to be this long, long story short. It went from that to, okay... We might want to stay overnight, kind of like a one-room studio. And then, okay, maybe you build a cabin. Well, if you get do that, then you need you need water, you need a shower, or at least a sink. Got to dig a well. Got to have power. By the time I did all this, you know, you're already kind of in it. Bare minimum, twenty thousand. More likely thirty. I mean. Fox built just his uh, man cave room. It's a nice building, but time he had electricity and all that done, it was a uh, you know forty thousand dollar jobber, and that was not even plumbed. That's just the cost of things. Keep in mind, yeah. By this point, we're in at least twenty twenty two. It's it's quite some time after my father passed, over a year, and. Uh, my brother was having work done on his place, and so the original notion was once the guy, who at that time he, he liked and trusted, was done remodeling what was our old family cabin, then he could do for me. And that's really also another thing that pushed it. My brother decided to remodel the family cabin, which really did need it. It needed, it was gonna either fall apart or need to be rebuilt. Like some of the, uh, the, the bracing under the floor had broken nothing was rotted through it wasn't leaking it was just old it was built in 1968 and then added on to around 1976 uh, by amateurs just doing it for basically a free case of beer and a place to hunt so it just needed that rework and absolutely he made the right call because the other decision would have been to, to, to tear it down and just build something new but when he did that it ceased to be the family cabin I grew up in and became his house or his cottage or, or whatever, his dacha is in Russia. And while that's cool, it's no longer that for me. So I realized I lost my cabin. It made me sad, but it also is how life works. It, it really kind of felt like my dad died over again because one more piece of him was gone, but that's life. It really is. But I would not have anywhere to go to out here. Over time, if I didn't act, I would lose my mountain retreat. And I've shared stories on here about how important it was for me in, in high school. I can't say I was isolated in high school, but 
I went through a bit of a time. I had quite a few friends. I was always a pretty social person. And I, but I was never like, oh, I have 30 or 40 friends. I was always, you know, I've got four to a dozen quite close friends. But we were we were always tight. And that was good up until 10th grade when everyone started driving cars. And then my situation became very different. With everyone driving around, I kind of got left out. And again, it wasn't anyone intentionally forgetting about me while well, they were forgetting about me but it really wasn't intentional like everyone would meet up at the parking lot and cruise around town and then i'd get left at home and that hurt i knew it wasn't it what made it even worse is i couldn't even really get mad but then i started inviting people out to the cabin and people would come and so my solution to kind of stay involved and not feel like a freeloader or a burden was to host get-togethers or parties or whatever at the cabin that way I'm contributing something and that made my social life bloom again uh, towards the end of my junior year of high school and we kept doing the cabin get-togethers at least once a month in the summer hell once a week when people were off work and uh, kept it up through senior year of course and the first year of college, of course. And then people started kind of going their own way. Some people moved out of state. So by sophomore year of college, we were still doing it. I remember we did New Year's party out for sophomore. But by junior year of college, the, the parties were over. Um, it was a good three, three and a half year run. And it was at a very important time in my life and allowed me to make connections with friends and have a place. And after that, I would still go to the cabin, but usually in small groups, sometimes just with just one person, sometimes just by myself, me and my dog. Uh, but I kept coming out. In fact, I would come out here quite a bit in my 20s as life would get hard, would get stressful. It was a place I could get my head on straight, you know what I mean? It was also a place I could study in peace. If I needed to do a, a research paper, I could come out here, bring my source material and a laptop, and uh, get it done without a lot of distractions. Uh, also, kind of moving forward quite a bit in time, after my wife and I had been living together in Russia, and then I had to leave unexpectedly when things went tits up with my visa and they wouldn't renew it, and I ended up having to spend New Year's without her, because New Year's is a big deal in Russia, and I otherwise would have been extremely depressed. I came out here. I wasn't alone, I was with a family member or two, but being here soothed me. It made me happy. It at least put me at peace. Yada yada, life goes forward, I get married to my wife, we, we, we survive a true long distance thing, and uh, actually our anniversary is coming up this month. Doesn't seem like it, but it is. <laughs> so going forward, after COVID, I've lost a lot of friends again. It's not exactly the same situation that I faced after my sophomore year of high school, but in a way it kind of is. I was starting to feel left behind. Again, just like that time, I wasn't mad, but after COVID, so many people left, moving out of state, moving to new jobs. So many people no longer had time for me. And while I understand, while I'm not even mad, while I'm even happy for them, like Jay getting a, a better, better paying job that he likes so much more. His previous job was frankly slowly killing him. While I am happy for them, I'm also only human. I miss them. And it did hurt on a certain level not to have them in my life. But time moves on. It felt like one chapter of my life was coming to a close. A good chapter. But all things must end. And then this idea for the land came up. And 
what was supposed to be just a shooting range evolved into a full cabin. And something I only realized in hindsight, and I never really thought about consciously, but I think I did subconsciously. Maybe having the cabin or a cabin can work again for me. You know, it helped me form a, a friend group when I needed one when I was in high school. Maybe now, 25, 30 years later, it can help again. Maybe this is the new chapter. I don't know. I certainly didn't then. But what I did know, I had to try something. I had to reach for something. In some ways, you might think of this as a midlife crisis, uh, but it felt like it was time to take a risk because that's kind of my life. I've always been a little bit of a risk taker. Or as I like to think of it, I've always liked to push myself. So, the journey would begin to build the cabin in 2022. In fact, specifically, I went back to look at the very first video we recorded, talking about it, looking at the land. It was June of 2022. So this journey began well over two years ago at this point because we're on September 2nd of 2024 recording this video and what a journey it has been I got up to get a drink of water and uh, kind of picked up something to fidget with actually something that someone traded for this week while I was out here a uh, South African infield bayonet it's kind of weird though because it's a uh, infield number four socket attached to an uzi blade kind of weird anyway so the original idea was to have the person who was redoing the cabin for my brother do mine let's just say it didn't work out now Jero and I did meet the guy we came out here one very hot July of 2022 meet the guy on the land kind of plan things out get a rough idea of cost kind of lay out what I wanted because at that time he was promising to be done with my brother's place around August. Which, you know, contractors are often slow. <laughs> so, yeah, realistically, more like September. Things happen. I get it. That was the original plan. So we kind of agreed on something, had a handshake agreement. And that was kind of it. He actually didn't even get the majority and my brother's stuff done until October. Now he had a little bit of an excuse because there were some uh, events that happened. There was a road collapse in in uh, August of that year. Road, uh, you know, kind of fell through, I, and they had to repair it, which made travel out here harder. But that should not have delayed him that far. Actually, I was going home for Christmas and New Year's. And we stopped by my brother's place as we were going into town to my mother's. And he was out there working. And he told me, yeah, we're about to get to your place. So as we were at the New Year's crossover from 2022 to 2023, he was still saying he was going to do my place. But by this point, he was way behind schedule and way over budget for my brother's. So I wasn't sure. And that's actually the last time I ever talked to him. <laughs> and that whole thing went south. So moving into 2023, I was trying to figure out who to get to build it. 
and talked with a few people, but a lot of them were just out of my budget, and it's so hard to get a builder these days. But I, I couldn't afford, you know, $200,000 or whatever. In fact, many of my family were encouraging me to look at prefabricated, i.e. mobile, i.e. trailer homes. And I did. And you know, the newer trailers, they're nice. <clears throat> at least compared to the old ones. They're a lot wider, they're longer. And there were a couple of nice ones in the 60 to 70 thousand range new. That's a lot of money. But it was still going to be a little cheaper and it was already done. I was tempted, I'm not going to lie. But a few friends, including my loan officer at the bank who I went to school with, too, didn't exactly try to talk me out of it, it, but did try to talk me out of it. And again, I wasn't really super wanting to do a trailer, but, you know, if I couldn't find a reliable contractor, I mean, we're just here wasting time. I mean, it was over a year. We had gone out, as I said, in June of 2022, and I shared the video on here, looking at the, uh, looking at the land, talking about trees that needed to be cut down, looking at where the range should go and you know I think that was even maybe before we'd really come up with the idea of a cabin proper just more of a, a shooting area anyway but by the summer of 2023 I, I didn't know what to do I just I knew I wanted to do something and there were there were nights when I was like this isn't gonna really happen it was a neat dream I talked about it but it just wasn't going to happen. Well, then my brother introduced me to another contractor, well, builder, out here, who had actually worked with that former guy who didn't do people so good. And uh, so I talked with him on the phone, and we, we had a good chat. He, he's, a, he's a talker, and went from there, and okay, we agreed to meet out here Labor Day of 2020. Fox was here tonight well last night now because it's after midnight and we actually were just talking about this story with his wife so we're going to meet this guy out here at say 11 a.m. so he and I get out here a little early going to shoot some guns keep in mind even at this point September 2023 this is just undeveloped land the only thing on it was an old gate and you know some old uh, barbed wire fencing that's it no infrastructure not even a road past the, the gate. So we're going to meet the guy. And there's some thunderstorms rolling in. So we do some shooting. And the guy finally comes up. So there's storms in the background. And he shows up in a wife beater. And just kind of talking, talking. And for the first few minutes, it's fine. They just chit-chat. And whatnot he asked about the guns we were shooting and he was talking about his but like fox had even told his wife tonight you know i'd try to get him on the topic of the cabin hey i want to do it here and he's like well we need to clear these trees and do this and i was like no that's it's not really what i want i want to not not add trees if i can help it so and he just kept talking about inconsequential things or talking to fox not me and here we are out here in the middle of nowhere and there's a storm we can hear it coming in so we know we have limited time so after my third or fourth attempt to keep him from veering off topic and uh, to talk about the, the subject matter at hand that you know Fox drove 30 minutes and I drove an hour to talk about I just kind of give up I mean our shooting gears out there it's coming a storm so I just start kind of loading up the gear I couldn't even get him to really, you know, tell tell me what the price was going to be. He didn't seem like he he didn't seem like he was a forward thinker. And so it, Foxy's not doing. He helps me load up, and I hop in the truck, and 
it starts raining so fox hops in the truck and here this dumbass is standing out in the middle of a field in the middle of rain and then thunderstorming still flapping his lips and we've not talked in 20 25 minutes at all about the project not more than five minutes and that was more me so right then I I, I wrote him off and I was like no I, I can't deal with this guy I think Fox kind of kind of saw me too and he goes hey let me contact this other guy that I know through my boss Fox said about his boss at work he'd been kind of getting to know him all year 2023 seeing his work he's like maybe maybe he can do it I'm like yeah maybe but here I am you know I looked at a couple of other contractors I think I've gone you know, met two in person and talked to a couple others on the phone looked at like four different mobile homes looked at like prefab buildings and nothing was just feeling right it was either not what I wanted not dealing with people I thought I wanted to deal with or not in my budget and I gotta be honest guys a year ago Labor Day I was despairing I really was starting to feel like this just wasn't meant to be it was a nice dream a nice hope it gave me a lot of excitement thinking about it for a year but it just didn't seem like it was actually going to happen and admitting that to myself did break my heart it's hard to let go of a dream but that's life a year later though here I am and it really fucking happened so Fox contacts his person he's kind of met over the year and uh, gives him my contact info and vice versa and it doesn't take very long for us to make contact over the phone mid September I'm already kind of just resigned to this not happening but you know Fox went to the trouble of giving this guy my number and he's reached out to me he seems interested in doing it he's a go-getter I'm hearing from Fox and by extension Fox's boss about you know this guy's for real on the other hand my wife and I are having some things after all these kind of failed attempts she's skeptical she's not sure this is what we should be doing you know the money and everything uh, so she's not real on board plus she sees how my brother basically got screwed with his contractor and that that's that scares her I'm the risk taker I'm the adventurer in the family she's the sensible practical head on her shoulders pay the bills person so together we work well but yeah we have to rein each other's impulses in on the other hand we have to sometimes acquiesce to the other person because if it were not for me she would never make any changes or take any risks she would just go by the book play it safe there's a time for that on the other hand if it weren't for her I would probably take one too many risks and lose it all so she tends to kind of put the brakes on me when I'm pushing too far question is is building the cabin one of those situations or one of mine which is the right future I agree to meet the guy he wants to meet for a lunch deal and kind of go over my budget what I want what the hey so I meet him keep in mind he's already driving out of his way to pick me up for lunch he lives about an hour 45 minutes at the very least uh, from my house in Northwest Arkansas so that's always a good thing and right away one thing he's able to do and even wanting to do is talk numbers how much this is gonna cost and again no one expects an exact total but unlike the second guy I had met last Labor Day he's putting pen to paper and he's already very detail oriented like what the cost of hot water tanks will be what the you know he's he's really almost talking about the costs of doorknobs I'm already liking this so he kind of figures out what I want and says well I'm finishing up a project I'll be free in October 
if you want me to build, I better start then. Otherwise, I'm going to move on to something else and I may not be free six months or a year. Well, this is the end of September, maybe even beginning of October when we're talking. Oh boy. Okay, so he's going to put pen to paper. He comes back and at first, well, his our first estimate is actually quite reasonable. It's still a smidge outside my budget. I'm like, okay. We need to scale this back. Is it possible to get it where I want? Now, I'm not going to type money just because, yeah. But let's put it like this. You know, he was pricing it originally for what a nice small home would cost. And I needed it priced more like what a nice SUV or truck would cost, if that makes sense. So we're not on the exact same page, but we're not a full chapter apart. So he's like, let me see if we can, you know, move the numbers around, maybe shrink it just a little bit and, and come together. Long story short, we do. We, we come together and come up with where I'm spending more than I really plan to, but it's not by a gross amount. It's only about, you know, 15, 20% more than I planned for. And he's down about the same from his original estimate. Now the problem is, I've got to make a decision essentially immediately. That's a big decision to make. And after some yang and nang, I just pretty much took some liquid courage and said, let's do it. Um, not really know how I was going to pay for it. Uh, I mean, I have savings and stuff, but I couldn't drain my savings. That, that'd be, you know, cutting your nose to spite your face, that kind of thing. So that's not going to work. Regardless, by November, we've started to break ground. We started in late October, digging holes, you know, kind of getting blueprints together. He put the, you know, the frame up, and then the, 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 the initial foundation and, and kind of particle board type floor or whatever you call it and you can see back at cabin project one and then of course I'd come out and we'd walk through and this is already what I like about this guy he listened to me and sometimes he'd say look we need to do this or we can't do that but mostly like for example most houses you'll put the door in the middle of the, of the thing I get where aesthetically that's appealing but I wanted to put it on the end like where you see it here because I thought that would give more openness to the living room and also room for kind of a big single window versus two small ones I think it turned out well and that's just it guys it is remarkable because you know just because I'm blind doesn't mean I don't have a mind's eye I do it is remarkable how just through words, me not being able to draw things or show him or him being able to show me pictures, it is remarkable how he was able to somehow interpret what I was saying and envisioning in my head and make it reality. This place is like 85, 90% like I had envisioned it. From the walls to the windows where they're at, the layout, the feel of the place. The only places that I kind of acquiesce to it's, you know, life, practicality, the bathroom. I really wanted a more of a rustic bathroom with a window, although he got the shower right. That's exactly the shower I wanted, even the small sink. So even that's close, but that was something I just actively sacrificed on to make the bedrooms more of what I wanted. The porch, the deck, yeah, uh, he got it pretty much right. The angling of everything that where it faced her right. And honestly, most important to me, and it, you guys can laugh, but I really didn't want to um, chop down any nice old trees if I could help it. And we didn't. The only trees we took down were dead ones, maybe some diseased ones, but mostly it was just clearing out brush. Now, for the first month he was out here, it was just doing a lot of cleanup and clearing, 
because completely undeveloped land. And that's why I've done these cabin project videos. This is all new to me. If you've built a house, I'm sure it's old hat to you. But I learned a lot, and there are a lot of setbacks, and there are a lot of things that happened along the way. We started late October, early November, and well, the cabin's done now. There's just a few things left to do on the structure, like there's one light that needs to be put in outside, just because the store was out of them, so out of like eight outside lights, seven are installed. We need to put up the rails on the deck here, but we intentionally didn't do that so the furniture people could easily get the stuff in. Um, kitchen's all done. We need to put up a couple of shelves in the kitchen, uh, and that was me. We were actually at uh, Home Depot this week, and we were going to buy shelving brackets, but uh, my contractor, he was so hungry. I'm like, man, let's just get out of here. It's not that important because we were looking for the wrap brackets. Like, let, We've got plenty of stuff here we bought. Let's just get this installed, and uh, we'll, we'll do the brackets later. It's not critical. Definitely need to do it, but yeah. Another thing, too, and this was kind of a late addition, the utility closet you've seen. I didn't know how to do that. Again, French doors, my mother even commented yesterday because she had them in her house and she says she doesn't like them. They just, yeah. So I knew I didn't want to do that, but I also knew we needed something. So I just kind of left that open. It was like, well, at the very least, we'll just leave it open. But now the solution was hit upon and it's kind of just a nice old solution of, um, just the old sliding doors like you used to find in closets and houses. So we're going to do that. So that's kind of a late addition. We'll just add those in later to cover up the utility doors there. So, yeah. You know, if we thought of it earlier, we would have integrated it then. But, yeah. But everything else, that, that's, that's probably the biggest thing left to do inside. Oh, and as I mentioned in the video, the bathroom door isn't quite shutting properly. You know, working with wood not using pre-made doors that's that's just gonna happen but um, yeah really what's left to be done is just painting the outside a little bit of trim work filling in putting up the curtain the curtains the blinds that kind of stuff you know more more the interior decorating than, uh, than anything else so yeah I'm calling it quite very done. I mean, I've got full functionality. But it's just so interesting seeing how something like this is, is done. And basically turning a place that had nothing on it into a fully livable, modern yet rustic looking home. It's something that's not cookie cutter, but hand built. Classic craftsmanship solid. I mean, I, I saw the bones of this place as it was going up. And that was the neat part, too. I, I saw this place at every stage of its construction from, you know, muddy holes in the ground to the uh, the, 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 the beams going up to the, uh, the roof. We did uh, stick framing. We didn't do pre-made trusses. You know, putting in the insulation, the windows. And, uh, you know, there were some things I felt like would never get done because it would just, like, the kitchen and the, uh, and the bathroom and the floor. Like, he always likes to do floors last, he said, but it was so weird walking in even when everything else was pretty well done of just not having a floor. So even that simple thing of having a floor was, uh, was great. <laughs> but then on the outside of that was getting all the utilities, as I've talked about, getting the power run out here and all the uh, kerfuffles that brought. Digging the well, which, while it was extremely stressful, and that was the one part I was super worried about, was getting the well got here and finding good water. Now that it's done, it's done. And that's good. We hit decent water. I've been using it for several days now. It's not giving any issues. It's 
it's close to the house, so it doesn't have to travel far. Pressure is good. As I've said in videos, it's about seven to eight gallons a minute, give or take. Can't complain about that. Hot water works well. By the way, I did want to do a tankless hot water heater. I've got one at home and I love it, but this is an all electric place. I didn't go with any kind of gas. And the tankless all electric units have a bit of a mixed reputation. I'll catch them next time. It seems like the technology is getting better, but maybe just needs a, a couple more iterations to get there. So, oh well, again, I'm willing to compromise on areas like that when it's practical. Plus, put it in a 40 gallon tank, that should be more than enough for several people staying out here to have hot water for showers. I will say though, since the first several times I slept out here, I didn't have a shower. Now that I do, Oh, I'm using that son of a bitch. Every, I, I've, I've showered twice a day since being out here. What's neat is I don't have to worry about racking up my uh, water bill. <laughs> it's also kind of neat that, again, I don't think the technology's there yet. But let's say 10 years from now. Maybe the cost of solar and panels, the battery, will come down. Maybe there'll be some new technological breakthroughs. If I installed solar out here and generated my own electricity, Guys, I could be self-sufficient. This house could take care of itself. That's pretty cool. I'm not a survivalist. I'm not a living off the grid person. However, it's neat to know the option exists. At least, at least I think so. I have some other friends that have thermal, geothermal power energy in their houses to help like heat the water and stuff pretty cool but no I just enjoyed seeing this place be built and it was mine or ours uh, the builder said that he put his heart and soul into this place and he did and here's something that I've noticed my brother's contractor he took so much longer then promised to do his work and even then his work was kind of subpar in some areas that had to be fixed his reasons or I don't know my guy's reason seems to be that when he took longer it's because he did a better job he was more detail oriented and some of it was me like I did change a few things for example originally the deck was not going to have a, 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 a roof a cover a ceiling I, I wanted one, but I was like, yeah, money. By not covering the deck, I will save a lot of money. But, you know, we got to building. I'm like, you know, I, I'm sitting out here now. I, this week, I've been out here. I've spent more time out here on the deck or in the yard than I have inside. I thought, you know, I can find the money to do a deck, to do a cover, and I will use it. And I'm, I'm right, yeah. And I, I, I knew from the beginning I wanted a big deck. I mean, it would be great to have 12 foot, but the truth is they were kind of eating into the yard. So we did an eight foot deep deck. But you know, when it's squared, when it turns around, you've got eight by eight feet, which is, you know, 16. So it's a small room on the corner there. And uh, it's nice, I really like it. This side of the deck, the long side is the full full length of the uh, of the cabin so uh, 30 feet 30 feet and then the other one is is um, half the length because it ends at the door because my wife doesn't like uh, porches that go in front of bedroom windows she has a good reason for it an event in her past we won't talk about it. anyway so that part is about 12 to 15 feet again it's about halfway so you know the deck makes a nice L shape and uh, yeah really like it really really like it <sighs> yeah there, there's basically nothing that bugs me in a major way about how this was built and the things that might bug me are very very minor I'll live with 
so yeah it's all worked out well but again I just reflect back that a year ago Fox and I were out in this not even field I guess piece of forest and not only had no work been done but I really wasn't sure if a cabin would ever be built I think I knew I'd probably end up doing something even if it were like moving in a container and retrofitting that into a shooting thing but here's the thing if I did that it would just be a place to shoot from I would come out here to shoot guns and then I'd leave I wouldn't spend the night or at most I might camp here for a night or two I didn't want that I wanted a getaway place essentially a vacation place I wanted a place that I could be dropped off at and stay at for a day a week a month if I had to and so that required a lot more and I thought maybe I'll have a place that can kind of help me form a new friend group a new gathering place for friends and family alike as we go forward and so far I know it's new so you know things that are new are just that but so far it's working out just that way Friday for example I had three different visitors come in scattered throughout the day a couple of them at the same time so that was neat Saturday I didn't think I had anything going on it was supposed to rain it didn't I got woke up by a visitor and I had company till 5 or 6 p.m. at which time I pretty much just said as polite as I could I think I'm gonna you know kick back for a bit and, you know, it was a nice visit we had three or four people show up then but I needed the evening to you know do my things cook some dinner yada yada today Sunday I thought I might be kind of relaxed and it did rain well it's, it's Monday now but Sunday yesterday it's Monday morning but then while well, the day started off quite slow didn't have any company during the daytime by uh, uh, late afternoon early evening Fox comes out with the whole family in tow and so they were here till 10 p.m. and not only have I had you know just visitors visiting to visit I've done gun deals out here I sold a couple of guns did a couple of trades uh, took some parts in so it's business wise has worked out pretty decent too by the way uh, Fox brought uh, the kids out and I asked him yeah this place is for everyone it hadn't had any kids running around screaming they were literally doing cartwheels in the living room so it needed that it needed to be broken by the kids um, I didn't expect one of them to eat a bunch of pizza and do a bunch of cartwheels and make themselves sick and then throw up in my sink so they also broke my sink in I guess I figured the first person to puke in the sink would be a drunk person but goes to show you the difference between uh, you know 16 year old me and 46 year old me uh, yeah <laughs> now nah, it was good I was happy the kids were out um, they got in the hammock and uh, went, they even went down to the creek and did a short bit of swimming so that was good so they came out and we visited we uh, we got pizza we we're going to do something a little better but being Labor Day weekend most other restaurants in town were, were closed so it's not too bad of a drive into town about half an hour it's not a big town but it's a town at least nearby and uh, today I have the you know, Labor Day I've got the furniture people coming sometime between 10 and noon and then a couple other visitors later on in the day and then Tuesday my builder will be back out to finish up a few things tidy up a bit and uh, then after that I'll have to go home and that was kind of the point of this week I needed to be here for the furniture delivery anyway that was the the genesis that was the seed of this visit 
But the real purpose was to stay a full week and really see did I make the right decision or was this kind of a big mistake? Not to, you know, bury things, but I've, I've loved my time out here. It has been great. I've had a lot of visitors, caught up with a lot of people. That's nice. And when I'm alone, it's also nice. I have time to think. The only thing, I do think I want to bring a desktop computer out here because if I'm going to do any real video editing, my laptop's a good little laptop. But it's it's it feels cramped. I, I mean that you know metaphorically to do video stuff on on a laptop. It's it's just not really meant for that. So I had toyed around with the idea, not immediately, but after paying off this place, maybe ne early next year, just getting a, a, a new desktop for my house in town and moving my existing desktop, which is about a year old now, out here. That way I can continue to work more comfortably, but we'll see. It's just thought. Again, my laptop's great. But for an extended stay, working on it for a full week, I did notice that. It's, it's, it's not trash or anything. It's just it's a little slower, a little more cumbersome. Definitely doesn't have the hard drive storage I need. I've gone to edit videos and really wished I had my archives with me of shooting footage and reference material. Just I don't have all my data, and I do miss that. And there's other like weird little things that I realized I needed. But, you know, it's gonna take a while before I get it fully equipped, fully supplied. But you know, I haven't noticed anything that I've just desperately needed that I didn't have over these days. So that's good. Just you know, it'll be nice next time. Someone's driving. Sorry. Here's someone driving down the mountain. Kind of makes you wonder why someone's out. They're not, no, they're not coming this way. It's just. Decided to come in just in case. I had someone was driving around out in the mountains, and I'm sure it's nothing, but I thought instead of me being alone out on the deck, just in case I'd come in and, uh, yeah. Again, it's just nothing. But I haven't made it this far in life without having at least a certain self. <laughs> preservation instincts and uh, better safe than sorry if you're wondering this weekend I have my Beretta with me Kim when you're out here I grew up out here you just uh, you know don't leave things a chance if you can help it plus my back was hurting I will say this though I'll be really happy when uh, the real furniture moves in but no it's been a very good stay out here I really can't wait to come back out on the 15th and what's funny is the gun part has been such a minor thing I think it'll become bigger once we settle in here and there's not so much to do to get this place ready but right now, I've actually not done very much shooting the, the week I've been on here. Hoping to do some tomorrow, well today, Labor Day. But, while that is important to me, I think it's just having a place to go. But, yeah. 
And it is nice that this is this is my place. No one else has ever lived here. It was pretty much designed the way I wanted it. It's nice that, you know, I was able to design a place that, that's comfortable for me as a blind person. You don't think about it, but a, a lot of places aren't quite suited for me. I can adapt. I'll be fine. I'm, I'm pretty resilient, but the way I set this place up, it's, it's easy for me to navigate. Things like that. But... Yeah, if you can't tell, I'm getting tired. So, it's been a good but long day. I guess I will turn in now, but I'll do the uh, last cabin project update video after the furniture gets moved in later today. And then that'll be it. And we'll go forward. Hopefully, this place will be able to provide fun memories for years, decades to come. But, while I don't know exactly how everything will turn out, I knew something had to be done. I knew I needed to make a change myself. I knew I needed to open a new chapter in my life. Again, most of my friends back in town have moved on. They've gone to their own chapters. That's okay. But this is mine. And where it takes me, I don't know. But that's okay. In fact, it's a bit more than okay. It's actually what I want. I want the new. I want to push myself. You know, I lived alone before I was married. I cooked for myself. I cleaned for myself. Did um, did my laundry and all that. But being married, uh, that that's kind of gone away. And I think some part of me laments that. Some part of me wants to go back on some level to being more self-sufficient. If nothing else to prove to myself, I can still do it. I hope that makes sense. And this is the place I can. So, we will see. <laughs> With that, hope everyone has a good Labor Day. Time off work. And I will catch you very soon next time. I'm going to bed. <laughs>